welcome. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant this morning is Father Kevin. Our mass is being offered for the intention of Jerome and Marguerite McDermott. Please stand as we begin our mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of His Son, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good morning, everyone. We gather with Easter joy to celebrate this banquet feast of the Lord, who calls us to His mercy and to celebrate His redemption, one in the cross claimed for all. My dear friends, as we humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism, may he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and still the greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race, and last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us, a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter receive their baptism through Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you, the author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this, we are witnesses. Now, I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shine on us, shine on us. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not only for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but who do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh, and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish, he took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, there are, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead, and on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Not so long ago, a priest friend of mine shared with me a story about himself that I still find very, very funny. And I can't believe, to be honest with you, he shared it because it really is a humbling story. He is from South Philadelphia, and he went home to see his family. We all know what parking is like in South Philadelphia. So he found a spot. He was all proud of the fact that it was in front of his home. And he was getting things out of the car, and he uses his body to shut the door to his car. And the minute the door closed, he realized it's locked, and the keys are inside. Now, 
with all due respect to South Philadelphia, we know that they're a little newsy. Everybody's outside. They're in one another's business and government. So they all see this happen. So he tries humbly to go into his house. And as he goes in, he shares with his mother and father what happens. So he gets a hanger, and his dad's saying, no, John, I'll help you, I'll help you. Don't worry about it, really, don't worry. No, 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 I have it. So he makes his way outside, and he has this hanger, and we all know that scene. He's trying as hard as, and every time he thinks he's close, he's not close at all, and he's getting angrier and angrier, he says, and he's scratching the part of his car. And his dad says, John, honestly, let me help you. He says, no, I have it, I'm almost close. John, let me help you. I have a spare key. <laughs> I can't believe he shared that with me. And wait till he finds out I shared it with you. We all know that feeling of being locked out. And it never happens on our terms. We don't choose to be locked out of the car, staring at the keys inside. We know that feeling that when the front door closes, just as that sound happens, I don't have the key. And we're always running late, we're always busy. There's no time that is good for being locked out. There's also no good time for being locked in. And we all have had that experience in anger, in frustration, in sadness, in embarrassment. We go to our rooms and what do we do? Lock ourselves in because we don't want to face reality. We don't want to face others. We don't want to face ourselves. So we've all had that feeling of being locked out, and we've had that feeling of being locked in. And what the gospel shows us, and all of the gospels in this Easter season show us, is that does not matter at all to Jesus. It doesn't matter what our thoughts, what our feelings, what our emotions cripple us with. It's what His power does. There is no such thing as being locked out of His love and mercy. And there's no such thing as being too locked in to our hearts that we can prevent the Lord from embracing us. Look at the disciples. The disciples returned to that upper room. They returned to that place where he fed them with his body and blood. They returned to the place where he commissioned them to go and do likewise in washing the feet, in helping others. It's in that upper room that he revealed that he would suffer and die, but he would rise. These are the disciples who left everything, who traveled far with him, and now they're lost. He's gone. What are we to do? There's fear. There's embarrassment. How am I supposed to face those people on the street that ridiculed us for following him? They're sad. There's all kinds of emotions. So what do they do? They lock themselves in the upper room. What does Jesus do? What does the Jesus do for them? He does the same for us. He comes into their midst. The locked door of our hearts, the locked door of the upper room means nothing to him. He is not locked out, nor are we to his upper room. There is no such thing as a closed door when it comes to his love and his mercy and his healing and his strength. How dare any of us allow our emotions, our feelings to overcome us that we think we're beyond his care, his love, and his mercy. It's not so much how dare us, how foolish of us in faith. This is a God who came into the world to heal us and help us, not to condemn us, not to judge us, not to lock us up in a room of our feelings and throw the key away. We need to realize that no matter how many obstacles come our way and we want to lock others and Jesus out, his love surpasses all of that. He doesn't even break the lock. He's able to invade our space. He's able to come into the depth of our hearts. And our prayer, our hope, is to recognize him. They did not at first recognize him 
like Thomas, until they saw the nail marks, until he said, it is I. He asked for something to eat to prove that it is him who is risen from the dead. And there is never a thing, never a situation, never a part of our lives that lock us out or prevent us from his love and mercy. As I said, how foolish of us to think how slow of faith for us to think, how judgmental we allow ourselves to be of ourselves, and that's foolishness. His mercy is abundant. His love is everlasting. Today, as we gather around this table and are fed and nourished, we must realize His presence, His presence in our lives and the peace that it brings. And we must not allow our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions, our own or others to get in the way of his love for us because that is truly foolish. Just as we struggle when the doors are locked and we don't know what to do and we panic, Jesus comes and stands in our midst and gives us that Easter morning greeting of peace be with you. Do not be afraid. It is me. I am with you. May any fear be taken away. May any lack of trust in ourselves and trust in the mercy of God be wiped away in this Eucharist. And may we all come to realize the power of God in his Son, who desires only, only to bring us peace. Let us renew our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Good and gracious God, we come before you now to offer these prayers aware of your love and mercy. For the church. May she increase in grace and holiness during this Easter season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders around the world, may God give them the grace to work toward peace among nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unborn, may their sacred lives be protected and valued. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord develop within us hearts of love and stewardship in order to draw ever closer to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, for family and friends who have gone before us, marked with a sign of faith, especially Peg Kelly Gallagher, Catherine Gallagher, and for Jerome and Marguerite McDermott, 
for whom this Mass is offered. May they rest in the eternal peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you gave us your only begotten Son so that we might know the way to you. Hear these spoken prayers and those in the silence of our hearts through Christ our Lord. the Almighty Father, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as if you, as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. story of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.